ants best friend for nothing. Dogs seem to have a special bond with humans, and we're about to explore what that might be. Here with some insight, please welcome dog trainer and author Laurel Seville and her dog Willow, who's just finishing up a treat. And she's, she was surprised by the applause. It's okay, girl. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So what is unique about the human dog bond? Well, it's actually, from a scientific perspective, really interesting because it's a, it's a story of co-evolution. And it's they're really we're really the only two species that have done that where we have evolved together as friends and oh is she that okay? Of course it's okay. <laughs> she, she can do whatever she wants. There are rules she for people, but no rules for dogs <laughs> around here. She wants to cuddle with you. That's cool. Um, Hello. So we have you know bred dogs for thousands of years to be our our companions, to be work for work for us, to herd but for how us. How did that happen? Well, there's different theories about that. Some people think that um, humans basically. Uh, domesticated wolves, but then other people think that wolves domesticated themselves by basically hanging around humans and realizing that if they hung around humans, they got food and they got attention and they got treats and they got well, They were kisses. right about that. Yes. You get all of those things as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. So what are some of the misunderstandings humans have about dogs? Well, I think in modern times what happens is that they really look at dogs as almost like accoutrements and mm -hmm. they get a dog based on what it looks like and what yeah. they, and so you see people in small apartments in the city getting huskies and border collies, right. which is not what they should be having in the city. Well, yeah, yeah, I have a Jack Russell Terrier and right. I guess we have a lot of them turned back too because people right. saw Frasier, they saw Eddie in the exactly. apartment, and they exactly. don't realize that those dogs need to go, go, go. They need to go, go, go. Um, so that's then, something. They don't realize, people don't realize how much exercise they need, that they're very intelligent, complex beings, that they need mental exercise as well as physical exercise. And they want you around. They do, don't and you? they want things to do. So how have our relationships with dogs changed in, in the recent generations? Well, again, I think um, you know it used to be sort of you got you got a dog and left it out in the backyard and it kind of yes, came remember? and went. We used to leave yeah. them out in the house in yeah. their little house in the backyard. Yeah, that or, seems or time to a tree just or whatever. Savage. <laughs> what right. are we talking about? Right. And a lot of places, unfortunately, it's still like that. But again, now they've become you know almost fashion accessories. You see it back when Paris Hilton had Chihuahuas and yes, I in her purse. Right. And I understand now there's an issue with Huskies because of this sh TV show Game of Thrones. Oh, interesting. And everybody's getting Huskies, and now the shelters are getting flooded with them. Oh. Dear. Because they get them and they don't realize, you know, they're very active, busy dogs. Right. Well, I know when you adopt a pet, you know, obviously you go through a lot of training and mm -hmm. questions are asked that you can buy whatever you want. Exactly. And then you end up with, with a problem like that. And she's from the Seattle Animal Shelter, so she's a shelter pup. Yeah. And uh, you can see that shelter pups can be pretty awesome. <laughs> shelter pups are the best. Yeah. Rescues are the best. So what do you think concerns people about their dogs the most these days? What do we think about our pets? Well, I think, again, because people are so emotionally connected to their pets, they look at them, they get concerned about, you know, is my pet making me look bad? So if the dog is misbehaving, they're more concerned about how it makes them look than it, you know, what really? it says about the dog. Is my the dog, dog always misbehaves, right? <laughs> Apparently that's not a worry for me. <laughs> they're afraid someone's going to think they're bad, you know, if their dog jumps up or things like that. And they, um, so... So and don't the, over-relate to your dog. Yeah, there's a lot of emotional connection I get from, um, you know, people that are taking lessons from me and I'll get a text, I'm so upset, I'm so discouraged, I'm not sure what to do. Sometimes I've gone to training sessions where basically I just sat at the table with the family and never even talked to the dog or touched the really? dog. It's really just talking through their expectations and what's going on. Because a lot of it's us and what we're yeah. doing. It's a lot like psychotherapy. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. What do you think about the whole, the, do you remember the names when we were little, it, every dog was Duchess or King or right, whatnot, right. now they're Molly and Sam and they you know, they very much come into the, the family. They very much do, yeah. Yeah, and we really look at th for them, look to them for emotional support. And you know, some dogs are trained to be specifically emotional support dogs, and some of them just do it in a more informal way, like we are right now, where you know, touching them and petting them it releases oxy, you know, happy chemicals in our brains and makes us feel good, and they're great companions. They really are. Yeah. What's your policy on sleeping with your animal? Um, it's you know, total individual choice. She sleeps with me every night. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. It's really whatever you want, um, as long as they're comfortable. Some dogs like to sleep on hard surfaces, and um, but there is some studies out sh that out recently that show that it's actually really good for us because it's comforting for us. It's comforting for them. 
That's just an excellent answer as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you wanted to hear. I assume you sleep with your dog then. <laughs> well, she sleeps with me, let's put it that way. <laughs> she sleeps where she wants. Yeah. Um, so you're an author, obviously. Yes. How have, have dogs played a part in, in what you've chosen to write about and how you do that? Well, I've written a couple of essays that appeared in the Bark magazine, which, which were specifically about a dog that I had a very complicated relationship with and one that really led me to dog training as I tried to help her. And then my most recent book called Beneath the Trees is a novel set in the Adirondack Mountains, and there's a handful of dogs that are sideline characters, but there's one that has, plays a pretty major role, and it's interesting because she's a rescue dog, and she has three very different relationships with three uh, main characters on the human side, and so she becomes an opportunity for me to explore the human characteristics by um, showing how they relate to her in different ways. Well, the relationships are fascinating. Yeah. And just quickly, you know, obviously we train our puppies when we mm -hmm. when they're young. If there are dog behaviors that crop up later in life, it's never too late. It's never too late. Dogs, just like people, can always learn. It's usually the people that are the harder ones to teach, yeah. to be honest with you. Well, you it's, need to give us treats also, uh, yes, and we might we be do. able to learn faster. We do. We, we <laughs> I'm going to start having beers at my training <laughs> sessions. <laughs> the most popular trainer in town. Exactly. Thank you exactly. so much. Well, thank you, Willow, as well. We'll be right back.